Hi and welcome to part two of this PowerShell SQL or SQL tutorial series. In the last video, we've seen how to basically create our database in SQL Server Management. And then we also went into PowerShell, made our connection to the database, and then also ran a select statement to fetch the data. And I showed you guys how to show that data on the screen. Um, but there's a little something um, with showing the data that way uh, that doesn't really let you manipulate the data. Like, I mean, iterating through the data and sorting through the data and then potentially exporting it into a CSV file or a JSON file if that is what you wanted to do with it. So um, we just have the uh, code from the last video. So if you guys haven't seen that last video, definitely go check that out. And I will be posting a link to that video in the description down below. Uh, but we basically have this connection. So uh, let me just run this part. And we have our data here. Uh, so we only have one row in our table right now. We're going to be adding more rows in this video uh, just to show you guys what is possible um, with the data manipulation that we can do in here. Uh, so if we grab our data object and we know like typically in PowerShell, we can pipe that to a select object. And then let's say we want to select the app name here, which is just test or a computer name. Uh, which is test computer, we would just do app name, comma, computer name. And then we would get those two columns. But right now, when we do that, we get just empty columns. That is because by setting the data equal to data set dot tables, it actually selects all the tables that came back from our command. Now, even though we would only get one table back, uh, that adapter uh, could take in multiple tables. So it fills up that data set with as many tables as it can um, or that it receives. So in our case, we know that we will only ever get one table back. So we can actually specify that we only want to get the first table. Now, very similarly to arrays and array lists, we can actually tell PowerShell only grab the first table by using the square notation and put a zero in the data set dot tables at index zero is going to grab us the first table. And then if we actually run these commands again, I don't need to open up the connection because it is still open. If we do that now, we can actually see that the select object does work and our app name comes back as test and our computer name comes back as test computer. So, um, and if we just look at the data variable itself, we can see that it looks identical. It doesn't look any different than it did earlier, um, but we can actually manipulate it and do some um, commands on it or some data manipulation. We can export it then to a CSV file. We can export it to a JSON file. We can do some where clauses, even if, like you do a select star from a table in SQL and you don't want to do any like where clauses in your SQL command and you want to do that strictly through PowerShell, you would be able to this way. Um, but we can also use for each loops. Now the for each loops could be handy if we want to iterate through each row of the table and if we see um, a column is equal to a certain value, then we want to perform something. So this is how we would actually do it. So here we would just do a for each. And then I usually like to use the variable row in data. And then we'll just close the parentheses and do an open and close curly bracket here. And then what we can do is we can do a row dot, we're just going to put app name here. I usually like to run these for each loops um, before, so we can actually finish the notation uh, with the dot notation. But let's just see what this gives us here. As we can see, we get test. And now if we do row dot, we can get app name, computer name, details, the ID. We can do the occurred at. So like an example for this would be if this occurred on um, September 12th, um, 
let's print all, all, all these statements onto the console. Let's update the values in the database. Or we can say if it was performed by uh, test computer two, um, let's go ahead and let's add that into an array. And then we can export all of those into a CSV file. There's all sorts of different things that we would be able to do. Or if you want to update every um, row in the database, again, without doing a update statement specifically through SQL to update every row, and you want to maybe update the row based on specific columns. So let's say if the app name is test, the computer name is test, um, then update a new row that you just added or a new column that you just added and concatenate the app name and the computer name from that row, you would be able to do that as well. So let's take a look at an example here that we can actually look at. Um, so if we go back into SQL Server Management Studio, I actually wrote out some extra insert statements here so we can actually get more data in our database. So let's just execute these. Um, and I can post these in the description down below so you guys can have the exact same data that I have. So let's go ahead and let's go back into our PowerShell window here. My VM is running quite poorly today, so I do apologize for that. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's run all these lines again here. So as we can see from our select object, we can see test in the app name. We can see test test. We can see some pro a prod for production. And we can see that we have two different types of computers here. We have test computer and test computer two. So if we do a for each row in data, and let's say we want to know what the row app name is. And let's say we want to, yeah, so let's just do app name. And then what we're also going to print out is the occurred at. So if we do the for each here, so here we can see that we do get uh, the app name is test. It happened Monday, December 6. Uh, 2021 at 1257 p.m. Um, and then this test is today, which is Thursday, December 9th, and it's currently 957. Um, and then we have a bunch of those that happened at the same time. So what we can do is we can actually say that if the, um, so what we could do is if we do get date. And I believe with get date, we can actually pass in a date. And let's go ahead and let's do row dot occurred at. And if we do that, and then we can do a format. Um, let's do the format. I believe if we do the format of capital Y, capital Y, actually, I think it might be all lowercase Y's, lowercase or uppercase M, and then all lowercase D's. I think I could be completely wrong on that. Nope, that's actually correct. So, what that gives us is the year dash the month dash the date. If you do lowercase m, it will actually stand for minutes. Uh, so you're not going to want that. Um, so what we can do is we can do if get date let's do here. If get date is less than date and then let's wrap the get the first get date in that wrapper as well and let's give it the same format here and then we're going to wrap that in full parentheses and we're going to do an open and close curly bracket 
and then we are going to just print out the entire row. So what this is saying is if um, our date of today, because get date will automatically get today's date is, um, well, actually I should say greater than, than the date that the row occurred at. So in theory, we should only get the row of um, December 6, if this works out properly. So let's go and let's see if we can run that here. So there we are. So we only get the first row, which is December 6th. Now, if I changed this and said uh, greater or equals to, we will actually get every line. So this is kind of how we can uh, do some like basic if statements on these database rows that you can then, if, if it is actually greater than, we only have the one row, you'd be able to perform some operations with such row. Or as you will see later on in these videos, um, when I show you guys how to perform update statements, insert statements and delete statements, maybe you want to um, delete the rows and maybe insert them in a different table, like an archive table um, and delete them from this table. So you would be able to do that. You'd be able to take that row, um, put it through another insert statement into an archive table and then delete that row from this log table. So that would be something to do, or you'd be able to put that row in an array and then delete that row from the database and then just export that array into a CSV file. So those would be all the different options that you guys can do with this type of data manipulation um, with the fetching data from SQL. So always make sure to just select that first table that is really the important part to pick up from this video. The rest is again, just kind of some simple data manipulation that we've seen before in other videos. Um, but this is definitely more specifically going towards the SQL side of things and uh, investigating that data a little bit more. So in the next video, we're going to be looking at inserting, updating and deleting. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Like, comment and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out and I will see you guys on the next video.